Yeah, because, uh, yeah. Can you introduce yourself to us a little bit? Yeah, so uh, I'm Fernando Rodriguez. I'm from uh, Miami, Florida. I have uh, two masters, one master in um, architecture from FIU, the other one in um, the arts of architecture. That one I focus kind of more on uh, computer, computer science courses and things like that. And uh, I just really like, uh, I just really like visualization. Uh, I'm trying to get more into uh, sensors and computer programming and things like that. Oh, thank you. So who, 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 who is next? Uh, well, my name is Fabio. Mm -hmm. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Mm -hmm. I'm a recently graduated architect and urbanist. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in mapping and intersection between architecture, urban planning and computation. And many of my recent works, I try to conciliate this. So this, work is, this workshop is just a great opportunity to learn more about it and apply it to my future master's degree. Cool. Who's next? Oscar, are you there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah. everyone. Yeah, I can um, hi, everyone. I'm Jing Rong from Tianjin University in China, and my major is urban planning. And I will be I will graduate from college in about two days. And my research interests are spatial data processing, analysis, and uh, visualization. So this workshop attracted my attention immediately, and I am very glad to be able to commute, communicate with uh, you guys. Mm, thank you. Thank you. So who's next? I can go next. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Zay. Uh, I graduated from a Master of City Planning program at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, in, my, in that program, my focus more was on design and policy. So I want to uh, have this opportunity to learn more about data and making maps um, and computational design. So thank you very much for having me. This is a great opportunity. Nice to meet everyone virtually. Great. Nice. Clara Wang, how can I pronounce your name? Clara, yeah? Anyone, anyone wants to go to next? Clara Wang? Okay, me. Um, hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. My name is Margarita. Uh, I'm from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I'm, I'm a student of architecture, so I'm in my fourth year, and I still got one more year, and I'm very interested in mapping, and well, I'm actually doing one of my subjects is of mapping, and I found that these, um, this course is going to be like really useful for me. Great. Mm -hmm. And then who is next? We have, uh, let's say, four minutes to start. Yeah? Just get familiar with each other. Who's going next? Should I? Oscar? Farhan? Christopher, hi. Okay, so I feel like you, you guys are shy to introduce yourself to the. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean that's that's okay. Yeah, so um, so we have uh, three more minutes to start. So before start, I quickly you know introduce myself to you guys. Um, my background is architectural designer specializing in computation design and visualization. Um, right now, I'm work as software engineer at ASRI, you know, ESRI, which, you know, we, we develop like ArcGIS product. And also I'm engaged in some other product, which is a story map. Um, let's say, think about like the, you know, 
medium style of mapping things. So in that project, I'm in charge of developing the graphics and data visualization things. So, I mean, even if I'm right, right now working as a full-time job, I'm very interested in, in developing all my sort of like design algorithm and visualization skill or developing some, you know, architecture and then, you know, communicating with the people like students or researcher, things like that. So, I mean, I'm very happy to, you know, got this kind of opportunity to communicate you guys and, um, you know, share my knowledge or my experience with you because probably most of you guys is a, like a very big fan for the visualization and geometry things. So, um, Actually, you know what, it's, we only have six days, you know, two hours per day. It's, to be honest, it's almost impossible, you know, to understand the entire material, right? To be honest, mm -hmm. sense. So um, I have been thinking what is the sort of a best approach to meet you guys' expectation uh, for several weeks. So um, one way I take right now is I'm briefly talks about what I already prepared for you guys for the visualization, you know, like a geometry and canvas API or other things, other terms that we use, that, that, that we use as an engineer. So, and then the material is always be there on the internet. So you guys can download and then just repeat. Now, you know, actually I have been teaching about computation design for a long time, but the most you know, important thing is that just like, a, you know, you need to get used to the code itself, the typing over and over again. So I think in that sense, we have very limited time to actually follow, you know, um, the demonstration. So let's say I demo something and then you guys follow and then we can, you know, have some troubleshooting things, it's very time consuming. So, so, so the, 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 the way I'm thinking right now is I'm just quickly, you know, overview and then, um, you know, describe what the code does, and then I'm gonna give you guys homework or assignment. And then you can, st before starting the workshop, we have, we have uh, you guys, uh, I got feedback. Yeah, anyhow. Um, yeah, then before we actually starting the, 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 the workshop in every day, then we can have some, you know, small talk or conversation and troubleshooting and things like that. So any question about the sort of structure? this workshop yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really you know hope that you guys have you guys own sort of uh, uh, the God or uh, reach um, you know the expectation of this uh, workshop and also um, half an hour ago I sent an email to you guys so in that email there's a, a um, sort of a link that drive you to medium page yeah. So in that medium page is a sort of a, our loot material. So in that material has like a six link based on the days. So there are not that complete right now. And then also there's some uh, additional note that I wanted to share with you guys on top of the material that we're gonna learn in this workshop. So yeah, this is the work, uh, materials thing. So um, I guess um, it's, it's Time's up, right? So we can start it, right? Great. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I have a question. Okay. Yeah, can we record this? Huh? Can we record this? Yeah, actually I'm recording the, the class. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not sure whether we are releasing it to the public or not, but just in case I'm just recording right now. Great. So first of all, you know, the title is about introduction to computation design, particularly focusing on data geometry and its visualization using this time medium. So I, I, I guess you guys already, uh, you know, the, the read this kind of short description, but let me summarize this one. So the first one is most importantly, I mean, this is sort of a boring job, but we need to, we, we must just get familiar with the dealing with the data things. So I'm going to start in fairly, you know, basic syntax from, you know, um, from scratch in the Python to up to not like, 
if parties were professional level, but at least we, you know, uh, we need uh, some um, experience or some syntax to decompose or assemble this assembler data that you have to visualize, okay? The second thing is that, so most of the computational designer, they actually rely on some platform such as Grasshopper or Sudes Maps or Maya or SketchUp, things like that. But the good thing for that is that they, the, 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 the commercial software actually give us boilerplate code, like some class, point, line, things like that. So, I mean, this is a really good opportunity and good learning process to create your own sort of custom geometry class that we're gonna learn in this class. And then the last one is a little bit in a burden maybe for you guys, because I'm going to talk about how people develop sort of a visualization or CAD application, which is more about like an engineer side perspective. But I think that this is the pretty, uh, you know, good understanding in terms of developing you guys your own like visualization tool. I guess once, you, once you're familiar with the three steps, I think it's no matter what, you know, just like a platform, 3JS or um, Rhino, or Python and the, the, the Grasshopper, or processing, no matter what, you can actually build you guys own sort of package or software, you know, as a visualization tool or the geometric analytical tool, things like that. So this is the, uh, the my aim, you know, of this, this, this uh, workshop. So we have actually a um, little adjusted this, this one a little bit. So one and a half hour is uh, the time for every day until uh, second July, I guess. Yeah. From now on, we have like a six more days. Anyhow. So these are the schedule and some detail. That one's a little bit different than actual code. However, we have here the link. So one day here, if they click it, you can jump to this medium uh, page. This is a today's agenda. Yeah. So today we got we are going to focus on the data processing and um, particularly, um, let's say, uh, Grasshopper environment or Core App environment, which is the online Python platform developed by Google. So you, as long as you can access uh, the, the internet, we can actually create our own Python code, which is really good. And particularly, we want to uh, understand really basic syntax um, to like a list and a for loop and things like that. And also, there is some additional material, uh, some some grasshopper component. If you click it, uh, there is several grasshopper component and the um, uh, let's say plugin. Yeah. So um, I have a some sort of uh, additional um, like exercise things using the plugin that I develop. So if you choose about visualization or mapping, some image processing things, we're gonna reach that one maybe tomorrow, not right now. But I'm, re I'm recommending you guys to download and install in Grasshopper environment, right? So um, if there are anyone who never used Grasshopper, can you say something? Can you, handle your, can you raise your hand? Everyone knows Grasshopper, right? Great. Um, yeah, and then at the other additional material is the Think Python PDF. Actually, you know what? This material is very famous and really, really well organized for the people who wanted to, you know, dive into computer science. So, um, I highly recommend uh, use this book after this workshop if you are interested in keep developing the ability to, you know, computational design or algorithm things. So I'm just leave this link here. And the other additional note is, uh, you know, the Python 101 things um, you know, from the Rhino uh, Magnet company. So I think also this is a good material. But the difference between the material and Think Python is that Think Python is more about like a genetic syntax and algorithm stuff, right? And then the Python from the Magnet is more about like a, how to cook the, you know, the Rhino's API, just a point, line, and things like that. But again, as long as you are familiar with the syntax, you can, you know, actually deploy same exact syntax to different platforms such as Maya, Swedish Maps, and Cinema 4D. They actually support the Python. So these are sort of an uh, overview of what we are going to do today. And then also, yeah, I don't know, the, work, the, the conference team asked me uh, multiple ah, things. Esperar porque está... 
Ya, ya. Eh, mostrando una página. ¿Cómo? Hello. 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 Can I go? Can I go? Okay, I think I can go. Great. Yeah, I think this is a beauty of life, right? Um, yeah, so um, these are some the material. Actually, I'm, as I said, I'm a computational designer, but particularly I, I, I'm a person who is very into design. You know, so, uh, sorry, I'm very into the data in design practice. So I'm actually over uh, the overview of all of my project and how can I do and what is the you know, philosophy behind the scenes. So uh, if you guys are interested in uh, my thought and my understanding of computation design, I highly recommend you to just visit the English version and then Korean version is for Korean, by the way. So this is the sort of um, um, my thought about data and design. Um, so, particularly, uh, we are, we, even if we use the data to just visualize, so actually, you know what, data out there is a very, it has a lot of noise and, 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 and a lot of, um, 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 in a co uh, the, the, in the, uh, a lot of uh, bad things we need to still uh, instill or we need to clean it up. So, in order to use the data, actually, we need to think about like some of the methodology, how we, you know, instill or how you refine the data. And then maybe we need to apply multiple sort of strategy to, to, to you know, clean the data. And then we call it some of the system. So basically, what the visualization is just, just not just, you know, convert to the numeric number or computer language to the visual language that human can see. It's, it's not about it. The visualization is more about like uh, revealing some insight. We need to uh, uh, not, not watch the visualization, we need to read the visualization. This is what I'm trying to uh, talk. So in, in the actually the data in design practice, I, I, I know you guys, most of you guys is from the urban design or uh, uh, geographical related things, but uh, remember, there's a lot of uh, uh, data at different scale, like from the geometry or architecture level or landscape and computation, even in action level. So I'm interested in this kind of the data and then all practice in different scale, they need a visualization. So not just for urban, urban, urban design, even the fabrication, they also need to visualize their like a uh, geometry information such as the vector, yeah, or uh, like a connectivity or coverage or things like that. So um, as I said, the data as, as, as technology getting evolved and then you know, um, we actually produce data in everyday life and then designer, even the designer access the data such as big data to take advantage of you know, um, data is basically representation of our lives yeah? to, to make their own design process or decision making process, things like that. And then software, Basically, we are developing visualization software, yeah? So my, my understanding of the software is not just commercial program, just like Photoshop or Excel, you know? I'm, I'm not talking about this kind of, you know, I'm sorry. Um, my understanding of the software is more about the package of the knowledge and technology. Yeah, so how we organize the knowledge. So for example, vector, for example, you know, without the vector, we couldn't describe any things in spatial information. Yeah, so for example, yeah, the vector is a very well-defined mathematic things, you know, throughout the history. So we just take advantage of uh, this kind of the well-defined, um, um, you know, the math education or science, which, history, things like that. So we basically assemble this, assemble this kind of knowledge. And then on top of it, we actually create some API like, or interface to access or to, to trigger one function, which function has the other, um, uh, trigger the other function and functions like chain effects based on your design or, uh, or, design or your decision making process. So this is all about the visualization. This is my understanding. So as I said, the CAD system, the only difference, the CAD system is a, it's a very, um, I will actually, I have a one slide that I can show you uh, four, four days later. 
But the target system is a very close to inner action thing. Yes, because there's only one program, there's a, a lot of UI and a lot of things, just like game, you know, once you click something, it, 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 it not just create a point, it has, once you populate the point in a scene, the point becomes relationship with the entire environment, yeah? So we need to understand this kind of things and then we are able to visualize in this kind of, you know, the language or data, you know, as a visual form, right? So the target technology is a, like an open the interaction and, um, you know, basically um, the CAD is a multiple uh, different single uh, um, um, functions execution and then we can um, package them as a, some meaningful action for design or whatever. And then the web environment is, a, um, you know, actually this is a little bit long history, but, you know, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, they actually fight each other behind the scene. Which one is the, the in order to get the paradigm, you know, the, the, the shift. But one thing I can for sure to say is uh, web become more and more popular. Even, even, we, even we don't need to install something on Windows. We use the mobile phone or even the micro world or PowerPoint, everything's migrated from the local environment to the web environment because this is the paradigm shift, and then a lot of people you know, get used to using the web environment. So the reason I picked the web environment is because we need to prepare our future, right? So the web environment is uh, sort of the things uh, where we need to understand. So as I said, the visualization is uh, not something draw on the screen. We need to interpret. We need to reveal some fact, right? So in this case. I think um, uh, I, I, I got several questions about this kind of things. So what is the best visualization? My understanding of the best visualization is not visualizing something fancy to, to, to attract people's attention. It's more about like uh, how we apply our domain knowledge as a visual representation on top of the data, which is fact, right? So I think uh, uh, the domain knowledge is really important. If otherwise we couldn't, we couldn't read the visualization things. So uh, we are jump to other um, section. So I recently I found this article which is very you know, useful for you guys. Um, there's a sort of a um, because I, 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 I sometimes people ask me, Andrew, what is the data, right? So my my answer to to this kind of question is. As long as you can um, qualify or quantify, or as long as you, you can recognize, we, we can consider this is data, right? So this is a very high level interpretation of what is the data. But in the computer science or statistical um, um, people, they actually, you know, they have our own sort of um, um, map that we can, you know, you know, take advantage of it. So there's a data type, like a categorical data type and numerical data type. So my experience about the urban data visualization is uh, most of the data is like a numerical data because um, it talks about some number of population, some statistical things. And also we, we need like a ge geographical position like latitude or longitude or elevation, things like that. Um, yeah. So this is a sort of the data type, and also we have a categorical data type and nominal and ordinal. It's like a red, yeah, blue. Uh, so we cannot cut, we cannot make the length. So there's also this kind of the data things. So I highly recommend you guys read, read this uh, article and then get the sense. Uh, I mean, this is not the important right now, but you guys uh, getting uh, as time goes by is getting familiar with, and then sometimes we need to convert. Uh, 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 nominal data to the numeric data or interval data, things like that, in the, in the pre-processing of the data to visualize. So this is kind of the, the something, you know, um, a knowledge that we need to understand behind the scene. Yeah? So li the link is there. So now we are reach one of the boring things for the coding stuff. So, um, I'm going to click the uh, link, uh, the Python basic, the Google Core app, okay? So you guys can also click the, um, the link.
So before I start, uh, I want to ask you guys about uh, uh, how many people get familiar with the, um, uh, the, uh, the Python coding. Have you ever used Python coding before? Okay, let's say all of them. Yeah, a little bit. It's good, but I couldn't. No, just... I ha I have never. Okay, and one person. We have one person. What about the two person? I guess there's a there's a hand. Three. I never used Python before. Okay. Great. You everything in C sharp instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean the C sharp is the much harder man. So as long as you understand the C sharp or like uh, Java or whatever, then I think the Python. The reason I picked the Python is Python is one of the easiest language in the world, I guess. If the people make the language much more easier than Python, I think I, I I'm not considered this is programming because Python is actually meet the minimum you know, programming like a syntax or things. So yeah, I think uh, you can start to learn Python, which is fun. Man. Okay, um, how can I minimize this? Okay. Yeah. So um, you guys can see my screen and lovely cat here, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, what is the programming basically? The programming is to make some logic. Some, we need to create the, some instruction that computer understand, right? So basically I can do, I can do like, let's say print three multiply three, right? So I can do this like this, it's nine, right? It makes sense. But no one actually used the computer programming with the constant value, right? The beauty of the computer programming is the variable. We need to understand the variable. We need to take advantage of the variable because without the variable, the computer is become dumb, actually. So now um, we are going to learn uh, how we assign the variable here. So in the, in the Python, actually, um, I'm not trying to compare this code with other coding things because it, it might cause more confusion. So um, we need to um, create whatever name, yeah, and then equal sign, and then some data, right? So um, if I press shift enter, and then the each block execute, and then print the result down there here, yeah? What if I give like uh, NJ as an input, shift enter, and then you print NJ, right? How easy, right? And then maybe I can copy this one to here. Let's say nine. Can you predict what is the result? Nine, because um, the, my variable, just think about my variable is a, a box, yeah, a box. And then we can put NJ character inside of the box, yeah? And then I also assign, this equal sign is really important, and then assign nine. The nine is basically overwrite, overwrite the variable and then print it. So this is the, the um, let's say all about the variable, okay? It's, it's not that hard, right? So uh, at the, uh, uh, after this workshop, I highly encourage you guys to type in, just type in, yeah maybe two or three times. This is actually what I did in order to learn the programming language. So, and then we can, we can execute the, the second uh, block here, shift enter. So my string, you can change the name, whatever you want as a, the, for the variable. So the first one is the hello world. The second is the integer. We can call it integer. This is the number, right? And then this is a float number. It's 1.27, it's a float number. And then, uh, this is the Boolean value, true or false. Even if the Python doesn't support like a type, it's not like a strong typed language, it's like a type list language actually. However, we need to understand the type um, in order to visualize or in order to make some algorithm using Python stuff. So the, the reason I create this one is because there's a four distinctive types in Python, string, 
integer and float number and then boolean value. So if you press it, shift enter, we can see this kind of result, right? How simple, huh? And also, um, there's a something like, uh, for example, I'm, I'm keep doing like print and then parenthesis open and parenthesis is close. What does it mean by that? Yeah. So for example, I have a, I have a, my float. Is it possible to do, to, to, to do this? No. If the parenthesis is, uh, is there, we can consider this is a function. Yeah, function, somebody already created. Yeah. So in this case, I don't know, some people who are developing Python, they create some print function for us, which is really good, right? We don't need to worry about it, right? And then we just put the uh, print and my, my bool, for example. Then we can print the my boolean value that we already assigned the previous block, correct? And also we have a type here, right? Type. So as I said, we have uh, four different types, yeah? So we can, uh, on the fly, we can um, um, check the type and then based on the type, we can do different, different things, right? So for example, so I have a, uh, I, I'm trying to check the types of a variable and then, oh, I realize it, this is number, yeah? It's meaning that we can visualize it as bar chart or um, pie chart, uh, or we can actually visualize in something on the map if they have some number like latitude, longitude, for example, yeah? But however, we have a Boolean value, right? So how can you visualize the Boolean value, right? So we need to change our strategy a little bit, right? So I think uh, in order to use the type, we can um, ask Python, um, you know, print the types of the variable, yeah? And yeah, this is the, as I said, we have a, a like an integer float, this is what we call a number. So we're gonna focus on the number first here. So as I said, we have a, the, the number equal three, right? And then we override number two. So that's why we got uh, the, the, the number two as a result. Yeah? And we have a, the other variable like a num a, which has three, num b is a 2.0, right? And then we can basically Plus them, <laughs> and then can you tell me what happened behind the scene? I know you guys, want, some of you guys are already familiar with the Python, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you guys have a chance to dedicate my workshop. No, no one. Okay, great. That's fine. Yeah, that's why we are here, right? To learn something. So this is the actually um, in other programming language. It 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 doesn't work, it become break, because the type is different, yeah. But I'm not going to focus and describe this things too much because it actually become more blocker to beginners. So uh, what I'm saying is that this is the integer, this is the float number, and then we plus them, and then the result is become in, in the float number, yeah. Maybe at the end of uh, the, uh, as time goes by, we can face uh, this example uh, later. So what I mean by that is in this block is, if you, the, the float number is a high precision than the integer number, right? So actually it has a little long story to describe it because it has something to do with the memory assigned behind the scene. But um, just, we can just think about, okay, yeah. Um, we can think about um, if the, if the uh, execute some math, the, uh, mathematic things between integer number and the flow number, it becomes a flow, uh, flow number. Yeah, so this is the something we need to learn. So here, so we have a little bit different types of uh, equation, right? So let's see, let me, let me execute it. Yeah, oh, we got four, right? So let's check line by line. Right? So my num has number one, right? And then this sign is actually equivalent like this. A, uh, my, num, uh, my, num. Sorry. Num, 
Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Yeah, this is the, the equivalent execution. So we basically increase the given number on top of this, the, 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 the variable on the left side. So we can keep continuously the increase the number. So for example, to think about it, we have a population data in LA, for example, and we can loop through all the population data and then filter out, let's say the people who are, who are in high school or who is a woman or whatever, we can actually append some condition. So in this case, we can count the data while the processing. So, I mean, yeah, this is the sort of example that you can see. So just, just, uh, just mess with the, with the code, just play with the code. And then as much as you can, you need to break the code and then fix the code. This is actually a really good uh, learning process. Yeah. And then this is nothing special. This is the elementary school of math, 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 math. So, you know, the inside of this uh, is that one actually choice, right? And then it actually, uh, Joyce, could you, could you please mute your mic? Good. So, I mean, one thing I wanted to tell you in this blog is the, 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 the purchases inside of the equation is execute first. Yeah, this is just a simple mess things. And then, then command. Yeah, so while you create the programming, um, actually, you know, even for me, my job is create the code, maybe more than 10 hours a day because I'm sort of a workaholic. But even for me, after several days, I forgot what I did, right? So in this case, we need to leave some message in the, in, in, in the, in the code. So in the Python, there's a two way of doing this. One way has we have this palette sign, yeah? The other way around is we have this like a three sort of a quotation mark, yeah? Like a dot, 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 next enter, yeah? So this code is, is not actually executed. This is for human, I guess, yeah? So this is the, how we uh, appended the command here. Uh, so far, do you guys have any question? Maybe I'm too slow or I'm too fast? Yeah, I had a question. What is the, uh, what is the double multiplication this on one? the previous? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, up, above? Correct. Yeah, that one is actually, in order to create the, 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 the comment online. Um, yeah. I'm talking about the previous one, the one above yeah. that one. Yeah, that one is you can actually create a multiple line. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you can yeah, do that. In the number section. Uh, otherwise you can do you that know. like this. Oh, number section? Yeah, yeah, number section. You have like a go down a bit. Yep, yep. Right here, double multiplication between the twos. What does yeah. that signify? It's like a scare. Yeah, it's like a, uh, um, yeah, scare. And I Exponential. Uh, exponential, oh. actually, exponential, yeah. Okay. Two, 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 yeah. Also, we, gotcha. can do, we can do like a mass and uh, 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 we need to import to the mass library, but you know, yeah, we, we, we can reach that point later. All right. Great. Um, thank you for uh, asking the question. So I'm going to do undo here. Right. Great. So the string, um, let's say for data visualization specialist, understanding string is uh, actually really, really important. Think about the data. So most of the data is actually string. Even if you import some CSV file, which has a number, that one's actually string. This is string, it's a character, it's not a number. So we need to cast anyhow. So what I'm saying is the, we have, in case that we have some data, data is most of the data is, uh, is like a um, um, text data. So we're gonna take a look at how Python, you know, cook the text data, okay? Um, yeah, then enter, same as before, yeah, like this. And then um, here's uh, the interesting concept. Yeah, maybe it's become confused for you guys, but bear with me. So we, have a variable which contain hello world, right? Yeah, 
But at the same time, this is actually list or array. So meaning that we can decompose individual character in that string, right? So for example, if I, if I um, execute it, so what is the index zero? So we have a, a square bracket, yeah, to index. So here, zero, every computer language is starting from zero, okay? Some people is confused, but yeah. So in order to print H in that hello world string, you need to use the zero index. That's why you are able to play H, right? And then the three means zero, one, two, three, this is L, right? That you are printed L, right? And then what is this, the minus one? Yeah, this is a bit weird things. Actually, this is only for Python, yeah. So minus one means that we can index in reversely, right? So meaning that um, it print D, right? What happened if I press two? Yeah, you're gonna print L, right? It makes sense, right? So maybe this is good for us to, you know, we have no idea how long the string, for example, and then we can just reversely index them. This is also really good. That's why a lot of people who are not computer science wants to use the Python as their primary language. So anyhow, so this is the way we index the string as a, uh, um, we can actually consider the string as a list to all right things. So, oh, we learned the print function, right, previously. And also we have uh, the length, uh, the type, type here, right, type. So, so we, we know uh, we are facing new keyword, designate keyword, we cannot use it, the length. Length means that they return the length of the list. Okay, so for example, um, I'm going to make a quick, uh, the, 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 the a, a array for example, let's say my array, one, two, three, yeah, and then print. Printer for what? Length. My A. Yeah. So it 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 gives us like a one, two, three, the, the length of the, the array, right? So what happened if I put this one? Yeah. We have an eleven character. Okay. Can you follow me? Great. And then one thing, focus please. One thing, uh, beginner um, make a lot of mistakes. Hello, can I go or not? Okay, I can go. So one thing the, the, the beginner usually um, um, confused about the number is that, as I said, for the index wise, we always starting zero, right? But if you put the, uh, if you ask the length, they actually count the first one is a number one, yeah? So my question is that, for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna print the last index in the string, right? So in this case, we're gonna print a D, right? And then in order to use the length, for example, length, the text. <laughs> and then it breaks because the number is different. So, you, as you, so if you use the length, you, we always need to minus one, always, yeah. So this is the, just one thing you, you guys get familiar with at the end of the day. So anyhow, we also know, uh, learn the, what is the length, okay? Great. And then we have um, a lot of uh, the string, the function for string. So actually you can like, um, you know, Python string, there's a documentation here. There's a, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, the, let's say, um, designated features or functions that developer developing. So whenever you, whenever you use, or want to use it, that you have no idea, always Google it. Even for me, even as a software engineer, we couldn't remember everything. We always, the, the look at the documentation or Google it or go to the um, Stack Overflow and things like that. So, I mean, the search ability is sometimes is really important, you know, use uh, the, the skill or ability 
as a visualization specialist. Anyhow, so, so we have uh, this kind of a uh, lower and upper sort of uh, inbuilt function, let's say. And then also I'm gonna give you one more sort of trick, okay? Let's say, I don't know, the uh, Google Core app either suffer to or not, but if I'm just, I'm trying to press dot here, and then press tab, okay, never mind. Well, it, uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that some uh, IDE, IDE means the integrated development environment, it's like a Microsoft Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text or C++ and uh, Note++ and um, Jupyter Notebook that you guys are already familiar with, I guess. If you put the dot and then shift the tab, and then it gives us all possible result. I mean, the, the function that we can take advantage of. So anyhow, so this is the string. Using the dot method, we can execute, yeah? We can execute the function that belongs to string, yeah? So even if I have uh, the hello digital world, uh, future world is with the low case, upper case, then but it just uh, uh, force all the character become low case, all the upper case. Think about the data, right? So, you know, um, I'm gonna, I wanna compare two different data, uh, maybe who living in this building, right? So for example, so some people uh, use their first letter of the upper case, but some people use just, uh, just uh, use the low case because they think about this is not important paper, for example. But in this case, we always force force the string become lower uh, the low case or upper case and then compare that you guys can I can see my point yeah because sometimes it's a text is like a, uh, actually the computer cannot recognize the difference uh, uh, this is actually different it, this is a force yeah let's say let's can do this this is actually better execution uh, corporation yeah I, I mean yeah we, we're gonna reach that point that point later anyhow so for the um, um, in order to compare two different strings we sometimes you need to take advantage of this function to convert you know, the, the string type. Because I'm confused, like different types with C sharp and Python and other language things. Um, yeah. This is the, how we print the multiple text in one print um, the function. So we simply can use the plus button. Otherwise, we can actually do like this, the, the comma, right? One, let's say, a comma B. Also, you can use this one, like this. Yeah, because there's some space. I mean, this is a very minor thing. So you guys, uh, if you guys have time to take a look at the, um, let's say, um, think of Python PDF file. So these are very in-depth things. So yeah. I can highly recommend you guys to visit this one. And also, as I said, that in the data, even if the CSV file, for example, they have uh, some number, but sometimes in order to uh, uh, parse the CSV file as a data, but sometimes the, some numbers just become string. So we need to cast, yeah? This is a very broad and comfort of computer science and programming things. So here, we have a sort of a, a one, one way um, to convert from the string number three, and then you can see like you can you can put the float and parenthesis open and parenthesis close, just like a print or length, and then it become a uh, number three, and then ten multiply three becomes thirty. Does it make sense, right? And also uh, we can uh, number. Uh, this is the uh, number, right? Float number. And then we can use the star str function in order to convert number to string, right? So for example, uh, if you convert the number three as a string and then multiply three, 
then the expected result is not nine. It's like a three, 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 three hundred is three, three. Yeah. So this is the how uh, we test the number thing. And then Boolean value is the same as the other things. So there is actually difference. This true and this true. Yeah, this is different. So this is actually character or string, right? But this is the actual true value. So let's say we can do this. My Boolean value. Yeah, see? The color is also automatically changed. The, the ID detect the value. So in this case, we need to also cast uh, the Boolean value, yeah? So, uh, so for example, uh, in the data set that you want to visualize, um, um, let's say, um, are you married? Yeah? Or like, do you have a kids, for example? If this is a yes, no, like a binary question, right? Maybe true or false. We, we pass this information to the computer, and then the true is actually is not Boolean value. We need to convert, right? This is what I wanted to make a point. So, any question for now? I have I have a question. Yes. So, is, does the bool parenthesis take in any uh, values other than true and false? Say if, if the values are one or zero or yes or no, or it no. has to be like okay. Yeah, no. But uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, this is a really good question, but it depends on the language actually. But some language uh, consider zero is false. Number one is true, for example. Yeah, but I think uh, always in order to develop our visualization or platform or app, I think that always explicit way is always good because most of the developing processes goes to debugging process. Yeah, so in order to debug, we need to make a very explicit modulize um, the algorithm and functions, okay? So I highly recommend you use the true false rather than zero and one, even if the problem is support. To be honest, I've never tested the Python. So maybe as Python versions goes up, maybe they can support or not. But what I'm saying is the Boolean value is a, they just uh, convert to true false as a string into actual true, true false thing, okay? Great. Um, yeah, conditional statement. So this is really, really important. Really, really important. I mean, it looks very easy and very straightforward, right? But we are, we are as a visualization uh, you know, people or specialized, um, we need to make some difference, right? So for example, uh, we have a people's uh, the height, right? So we, we need to uh, uh, make some average and then below the average, we need to visualizing red color, for example. Above the average, we visualizing like let's say green color, for example, yeah, for the some um, you know the amusement park or things like that, yeah. So in this case, we need to compare the value, right? So so for example, here, this means is it true, right? Ask you, is true? This is is it's not it's not true, yeah. So for example, this is true value, false value. So true value, false value, they are not equal. So the false is a result. Does it make sense, right? And then true and false, they are different. So they ask me, they are, do, they, do they different? Yes, then the true is a result. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little bit confused, but I mean, as I said, programming is actually it's not just listening to something. You, you need to get familiar with uh, the, the, the Typing. So actually, my uh, my I'm always ask my students like a typing, typing before your brain works, your finger need to type, right? Before you start and starting thinking. So just uh, keep typing, and then you, you can understand um, the familiar ways and the algorithm things. Anyhow, so here this is the interesting comparison, right? So we always think about the data, data, right? Because we need to visualize. So A is a number ten, right? This is an integer number, right? And we have also number 10 as a string, right? This is actually true? So no, because they're essentially different entity in the, in the computer uh, side, right? However, if I cast uh, the, the 10 uh, string as a number, then they have become true, right? It's not, it's not that complex, right? 
And this is all about the, like a logical operation things. Um, yeah, you can do this. So for example, um, you know, in this line, uh, I want to ask you guys what, what execution is happening in, in the first place? They happen first place, right? And then they, um, and then they compute. And then the, as a, with the result, they try to assign the last value to here. But well, what happens if I do this like this? Yeah. I, I, I want to learn. Yeah. Maybe uh, this is a false home. Huh. This is interesting, interesting result. Yeah. Because I expect that this value is true or false. And then we actually, sorry. Can I go? Okay, so, so I mean, this is a very interesting result to me I, uh, because I expect that they execute first, yeah, and then the result is gonna be uh, uh, true or false. And then I apply uh, some multiplication for the true or false, and then the result is false. I, I don't know how, how the Python works, but as I said, uh, just uh, think about like uh, how the execution flow goes. This is the important things. So also this is not that uh, explicit uh, algorithm, right? So in this case, I'm not recommending like this. So maybe if you compare the true false value, we need to create the other function to take a, a, to dealing with this kind of calculation. And then numeric numbers also different way. And then we have a special function to compare numeric uh, between numeric number and Boolean value and then do this based on their um, characteristic. Yeah. So again, we have a tie, we can compare the tie yeah, we can uh, change the float number because think about this is the integer, right? This is the float number. So that's why we compare integer number and float number and then they become different, right? However, if you uh, cast number five as just a float, right? And then try to compare that become true. Makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, this is the, yeah, um, pretty straightforward, man. And this is the, the logical, the other logical operation, yeah. The result is, uh, the first one is true, second one is false. First of all, the inside of the computer, they actually try to compare this number first, yeah. And then this is actually false, yeah. And then this is all operation, meaning that none of them is, is false, we just skip it. It's just done, the operation is done. So that's why, uh, that's why they say true, right? So that one, they try to ask the, 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 the uh, try to execute this one, this is a false, right? And in this context, the end, they, they both, they need to true both between uh, the, uh, the around the end. Otherwise there's always print false, yeah. So we can, we can think about this kind of logic. So think about, we have a CSV file, right? There's a lot of data. So I want to visualize the person who, is, who has two keys and then has a, has a job and have a certain amount of the banking state money, for example. So in this case, we can use or and or and to make some um, the logical operation to filter out the raw data. Make sense? Correct. So this is a little bit more complicated, but you can just follow on a one by one execution. You know, it's not that complicated. So now we are reach the if statement. So let's say somebody asked me, uh, what is the programming? Then my answer is uh, two things, looping, checking, looping, checking. That's it. Yeah. So we just keep loop. Yeah. And then if the condition is meet, and then do, do other job until the condition is meet, yeah? It's more about like a if statement. If statement is more about like a logical things. And also some people ask me, Angel, how, how can we become in a good computational designer? So my answer is, uh, if you are really good designer, then you, are, you can become good computational designer because your thought process need to be just become computer instruction. It's not something special, yeah? So 
when you, whenever you try to make your own visualization, you can think about how you, you know, process your data on the high level in your brain first, okay? And then you can just make some line by line explicit statement to the computer using if statement, for example. Can you follow me? Great. So here, this is a very straightforward thing like A is three, B is five. A is, uh, is this true? Then print it. Otherwise, checking a second statement. Yeah? And then none of them is uh, the correct, then we can just do else. Yeah. Shift enter. A is uh, smaller than B. It makes sense, right? So what, is, what, what happened if I six? Because we use a variable, like A is greater than B, right? This is very simple, right? So I'm highly recommending you guys like, play with and mesh with and make, make it break, okay? I mean, this is a really good you know, topic to learn something. So again, loop. As I said, the loop is really important. The essential is the essence of the computation is basically loop, okay? So there's a different types of way. Um, I mean, even I usually use the TypeScript in the company. Personally, I use C Sharp and C++. But um, there's a lot of like a fancy loop, but you guys don't need to understand the entire things because we are not like hardcore computer science people who need to optimize the, 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 the algorithm, right? So what we need to do is what is the, the you know, straightforward way to make a loop, okay? This is the one of the straightforward loop in Python, yeah? So meaning that just like a length, just like a print, just like length or type, right? The range mean it gives us list number with the given a uh, number. In this case, it's gonna return zero, one, two, because this is a, uh, uh, e exclusive function for now. The range is an inclusive function, ex exclusive function. So you don't need to worry about this kind of things. I think it's, it's, it's not that, become, uh, not, not that you know, important for now. So if I want to you know, uh, execute 10 times, just simply press 10, yeah? But internally, internally, if I print it, as I said, always starting from zero, right? And then it's up to a uh, uh, loop to nine, meaning that the entire number is 10, yeah? And then this is the, the other way of use the range. Let's say we can actually go to the documentation, yeah? This is a good hobby, actually. Uh, Python range function, yeah? Uh, you can go to documentation, but here, yeah, there's a three parameters, yeah? This is maybe, you know, we can learn how we read the document because I'm always looking at the document because I couldn't remember everything, right? So this is a, we call it a parameter, as you can see here, right? The start number, start number and step, yeah? Just like a range in Python, yeah? So if you have a question, I ask you guys to you know, go to the documentation. So three, six, the expected result is uh, starting from two, five. Yeah. And here, uh, rather than the, use the constant number, rather than use the constant number, I'm gonna use the variable, yeah? So let's say we create a algorithm, yeah? And then we have a, let's say, 100 CSV file, yeah, from the client. But the 100 CSV file has still, uh, uh, it has a different the, the length of the data. So we have no idea how long, yeah? So we, in this case, we can use the variable, like for example, like let's say, uh, this one is the length of the size of a document, for example, yeah? And then maybe, in this case is 10, let's say, shift enter, and then you automatically generate the number for looping, yeah? And then it, it will loop through every, every time. However, we have this percent operation, yeah? What it does is just like uh, it, it divide it and then it asks remainder, reminder, yeah? So in this case, if I do this and then if the conditions meet, the number is always an uh, even number. Does it make sense? Otherwise, it's the old number. 
Yeah, because of the, the beauty of this, uh, I'm sorry for noise. <laughs> yeah, so we can also use this percent to get the remainder as an operation. So that one is also very uh, useful for the, particularly for pattern, pattern, you know, for the facade. Or uh, let's say, think about it. We have like a thousand of thousand of data, right? In order to explore the data very quickly, we don't want to look through everything. Maybe we can look through maybe five times, yeah? Because we just want to explore in order to make a, what is the best uh, visualization methodology for particular this data. So in this case, we can simply sampling, simple number, right? So in this case, also you can use this kind of the modular operation, okay? And then while loop. While loop is a little bit, little bit dangerous for the beginner because um, sometimes the condition is never met. It's, it's like a continuous loop. Yeah. So, but there is a while loop. Um, I, I think I need to mention. So, for example, um, we have a data set, and then we're gonna we wanted to loop through this entire data. And then if the condition is met, we want to remove the data from this list. Yeah. So we have a ten data set. Maybe. Keep looking, right? I already looked for 10 times, but there's a, none of them is removed, for example. And we can keep looking, and in some particular condition meet the one of the, 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 the index or data inside of the list, they automatically removed, and then we have nine, eight, seven. But I have no idea what condition get gonna move, but until the, the list become empty, then we can keep looking. So when you need this kind of execution, we can use the while loop, okay? I mean, yeah, if you guys uh, uh, in, um, wanted to know more like, in detail, there's a lot of material out there, like a pipe, the, the YouTube or Medium or Google, yeah. So in this case, the assigned number is five, and then while looping, I'm keep minus deduct number one from the, the iter variable. And then at the end of the day, they reach the zero. You know what, if I do this, the execution, execution is never, never done. You just keep going, keep going. So then, then it breaks your pipeline and then you need to restart your application, meaning that your job, you need to redo everything, which is no good. So I'm always making some like um, um, break point um, in terms of use the while loop. So just for your information. Yeah. Um, as a computational designer, I use, uh, sometimes I need to um, control the surface or three-dimensional voxelized area, for example. In this case, we need like a special loop called the double loop or triple loop, yeah? This is actually nothing special. But um, I mean, this loop is the first one. First of all, this loop gonna execute one time and then inside of this loop, it need to execute three times, and then come back to here, and then second time, three times it need to execute the inside of the for loop. It's like a just 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 follow the logic line by line. Yeah. So double for loop is there, so we can simply create some uh, like a two dimensional array. Yeah. So in this case, we use the for loop. So. Are you okay, you guys? <laughs> yeah? Everyone is okay? Somebody? Yeah, sure. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I, 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 uh, I don't know, because I, um, I, I believe I'm doing um, um, good job, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, as I said, it's a little bit boring, but just bear with me. The first, maybe the day after tomorrow, we're gonna reach some canvas API, like a draw something on the canvas, and then we can make a more fun. Even tomorrow, I think, we can go jump to the Python things in Grasshopper and making some image processing. It's nothing special, but just like extract some particular color from out of the image and things like that. So bear with me, but that one is absolutely important. Needless to mention, this is important. And then the, if, if you have, Right foundation, so as time goes by, it become more, you know, just like a snowball effects, okay? So I appreciate you guys' patience. Great, keep going. <laughs> yeah, data structure. Um, data structure, so as I said, 
we are data visualization specialist. We are dealing with data, right? So meaning that we need to understand data structure. Even not just understand data structure, we need to control the data structure, govern the data structure. Sometimes you need to create your own customized data structure, right? So now what I wanted to uh, uh, try to say is that what is the genetic or like a, a basic data structure that Python give us? Yeah, so we need to understand this data structure first, and then on top of it, we can create our own sort of data structure, which is specialized for our visualization purpose. Okay, so now, as you know, we learn string, right? We now we know string is just like a um, array of characters. It's, it's, we can consider this is array, right? So now we are actually facing array here. Yeah, so array or list. Just consider it's like a let's say uh, the main box. Yeah, we have a, like a some small box, right? And then they have a, basically they concatenate each other. Yeah. So in this case, uh, I have a one big box, all right? And then I have uh, the integer number, yeah, with comma. Comma means like they are they are like a different like a like a, like a section inside of the the, the array. So even the one of the simplest way to declare um, that the array is uh, like this. A, that's it. Yeah, maybe TypeScript or C++ or C Sharp Java is a little, little bit different, but this is the one of the simplest way. And then we can just put some number. Nothing special. Yeah. Oh, we faced a little bit different things. Previously we saw this one, right? Yeah. But now, the, the text inside of this square bracket, right? Interesting. Yeah, let, let, let us, let me excuse. Yeah. So list A, so we expect printing every number, makes sense. And then, oh, this is the, also the other interesting things. But I can assume that, oh, this is the starting number and there's nothing, meaning that we can print it the, at the end of the list. Yeah, but if I put like um, two, and maybe one for example, and then, oh, there's nothing. Oh, yeah, if I, if I put two, okay. Oh, because simply there's no number, okay. So if I put number one and number two, then two. Maybe if I put number three, we have a more number, right? If there is no thing, no, no number empty, and then we're gonna print everything after number one index. Yeah, just play with it. Yeah, it's pretty fun actually. Yeah, and then uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, the the hello. So I have a question: How can I print H character? Yeah, in this case, because itself this is a list, so we need to index indexing. So this is the first one, right? So I need to put zero. And then also I need to put the zero. Can you follow me? Okay, let's, let's print it. Why not? No. Yes, H, yeah. So um, what is this? Yeah, how can I print number one? This one. We call this is a three-dimensional matrix, actually. Three-dimensional matrix. I mean, um, if you really wanted to become, I, I don't know, maybe after uh, at the end of the day, some some of you guys want to make become like statistical analyst, uh, the data scientist, whatever. They're dealing with a lot of data which has a n number of dimension. Yeah. So you guys need to get familiar with the how to index, how to update the law and column and things like that. This is all about the controlling and the cooking the data structure things, as I mentioned, the data structure here. So in order to index this one, so this is the first dimension, right? And then the, the second dimension, the, the last dimension, uh, number one. And then I expect I'm going to print number one. 
No, oh, yes, good. <laughs> because I'm not, these days I'm not used to Python a lot. I mostly use them in the other language. But some languages look, look like this, actually. You know? Like zero, zero, zero. It depends on the language syntax. Sorry. Yeah. But Python, Python follow this fashion. So I think this is really important to index particular data in your um, data structure, which is n number of uh, um, dimension. Okay. Um, here, I mean, this is I think nothing special. As I said, string itself is array, so we can use the index fashion, right? So in this case, we can just uh, chop it. Yeah. Basically, we remove this this uh, three. Is one, two, three. After that, I want to I want to print all of them because there's no number, right? If I have like a five, then maybe we can see uh, starting from starting from three and four, five. That's it. Yeah, I mean this is a bit little bit confused for beginner, but I think it's a pretty really straightforward things. Once you get familiar with this, right, this is nothing special. So one thing which I mentioned in this block is that, as I said, you know this is string. We can consider as a string, but if you, what happened, we put this string inside of the, the, the loop, and then the Python, Python is automatically interpolate, oh, this is a string, meaning that this is the array. So I'm gonna give you like an individual character inside of the uh, string, string, yeah. So this is the, I think um, uh, you can you can get familiar with pretty soon once you start it. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, these are most important things. Uh, so we can go quickly a little bit. So here uh, we have the uh, list because square bracket means list, right? And it has like uh, some character, right? Let's say string, right? So in this case, we can use the, the um, make, uh, we can convert the list as a set because the set support the sort. So in this case, you can print it, this alphabetical order, like A, B, C, D, E, F, C, blah, 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 blah. So in this case, like, um, uh, just think about, you, you guys have a, a data about grocery shop, right? So we wanted to uh, sort or rearrange based on the item, things like that. So we can also use this kind of sorting things um, because you know the set sorted. This is an inbuilt function. Yeah, we need to take advantage of the inbuilt function. I think. Otherwise, you need to rebuild from scratch, which is no good. But the, 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 the beauty of the Python is that I guess. A lot of people use the Python, meaning that a lot of example, a lot of troubleshooting is a lot already out there online. So anyhow, so this is the list. I, I dump this list in the for loop, and then the for loops individually visit the item and then print them. That's it, nothing special, huh? This is the length, as I said, minus one, indicating the last number, oops. Last number, in this case, nine. If I do like a minus two, then you're gonna print eight. Okay. Um, do you know why the error is a curse? This is a maybe a side effect or a good effect of the, the, the Jupyter notebook environment. But as I said, I'm keep executing this block and block and block, right? But I'm never execute this block. So meaning that the, my list it's not, uh, it's not exist in the memory. However, this line try to access the, the, the my list, but there's no information in the memory side. So that's why we need to execute this one first, and then keep going by pressing shift enter. Yeah. And also, this is the other way of uh, uh, um, describing as a side effect is that um, because all the Variable you declare before they are always live in memory in some way, yeah. So sometimes we can you 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 um, unintentionally override 
or unintentionally tweak the data, so which is actually is no good. But I mean, this is one of the, the drawback that I, that I don't want like use Python for the heavy work. I mean, particularly developing the product. Um, okay, so we can keep going. Um, yeah, append. Append is uh, your best friend in terms of dealing with the, the array. As I said, there's two way of the append, the insert data in the list, yeah? One way is that when you create the, when you create the, um, the, the list, you can explicitly mention uh, there's a number. This is your data, yeah? Otherwise, the other way around is you can just create the a empty array, yeah? And then, I don't know, whatever for loop or if statement, if, if, if the condition is meet, then we want to append it. The data. The data is just like a nickname. So for example, but you got my point, right? Yeah. So in this case, what I'm doing is I already created sort of an empty list first. And then a 10 times loop, while loop, I multiply the 10 against uh, the, the, the index number, then we the print the result like this. So think about it. We have a 10 megabyte CSV file. Yeah, we want to visualize. Maybe it takes a lot of time, you know, at least to load the data, right? So in this case, we can actually load data and then filter out some uh, you know, necessary data or like a, uh, in the machine learning side or statistical learning side, they call like a dimension reduction or a feature reduction, whatever, yeah? And then we can create a new set of the, the filter out data. And then that one is actually the data we want to deal with on the fly, on the real time, on the whatever, in the app, on the application, yeah? So in this case, we can create a simple uh, list and then append some like a filter out the data. Great. Uh, this is sort of the way of the index. Um, and you know what? This is actually really bad as a software engineer because the my list has a multiple different types of data, which is actually really become become problem in in a long run. But on the other side, which is really uh, convenient, let's say, yeah. So, but the, in this in this uh, blog, what I'm trying to say is that the list is a little bit flexible to curb, uh, to contain different types of data at once. But in this case, we can actually you know, append one more sort of conditional statement. If the data is uh, this one, and do this, and the other one, do this. So, one statement need to be installed in the execution, I guess. Anyhow. So we can, this is very smart things, you know. This is my list, we can literally print it, right? And then the insert, first number, second number, right? Yeah, you know what, actually I can, I can predict, yeah? The first one is gonna be index, I guess. The second one is the number. So what if, what if I do like, let's say three and uh, four and 100? You can see how it works, huh. you know, one, two, three, four, yeah, after four, we append 100, yeah, we, we can predict it, otherwise, you know, what you guys need to do, go to documentation, just Google it, there's a very, very uh, extensive documentation, so we can take advantage of it, and then also the remove feature, uh, the function, so it has a parenthesis, and then some string data, so we can predict, right? Yeah, this function is actually find the same information and then remove it. Yeah, th because there's no like a di the digital, for example. Yeah. So you are getting become like engineer, a software engineer, or visualization specialist engineer. Yeah. So just get familiar with the how language, how the computer talk, how we ask computer works. Yeah. This is all about the programming. So we have a path. Yeah, pop means like, uh, let's say in this case, pop, we have a we have an array, zero index to all the way up and number of the array. The pop means that the last array gonna be evaporate, just remove, this is pop. 
I don't know whether there has a shift uh, function, in, but in TypeScript or JavaScript that we want to learn from uh, day of the tomorrow, there has a shift function. The, the array is like a little bit like a shift one by one. I mean, this is all about the, uh, the controlling and modify the data structure. So I'm, I'm, I'm keep, keep going to um, emphasize the importance of the data structure because visual, visualization is all about understanding data structure, in fact. Um, we have a pop here and then reverse. Yeah, we can predict reverse is just like a little bit reverse, you know, the list here. And then salt and reverse and these are some other feature. So, yeah. And then dictionary. Um, dictionary. So, I think uh, uh, dictionary, let's say in other different computer language, they call maybe hashtag, hash map, or um, uh, like an object. I cannot remember. I mean, it has a lot of names, but the most important thing is that they have a key value paired information. Key value, key value, yeah. So in Python, if you have a key value data structure, we call it dictionary, that's it. So now, in order to declare, I'm gonna make a dictionary, right? So meaning that we need to do like a, a curly brace here. Yeah, we have a curly brace open, close curly brace, and then key value, key value, key value, yeah, with the comma. So in data science, there are three different types of data structure, as I, uh, I mentioned, but I don't know, but. Structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data. Structured data means CSV file, like a matrix. It's very well organized, like a TSV file. CSV file means like a comma separate value. TSV is a tab separate values. Basically, they're the same, yeah? But they have a, like a very clear, like a organized, like a, um, let's say, um, array uh, information. We call it structured data. And then what is the unstructured data? Yeah. Unstructured data is text data. So looking at the Twitter, yeah? Twitter people can type in whatever they want, right? Even they can break their grammar, right? But it's okay, yeah? So we call this kind of text data as unstructured data. But now we are talking about the semi-structured data. What is the semi-structured data? So in, in computer science or data science, they call this kind of dictionary is un, un, semi-structural data, okay? And also recently, uh, I don't know how, uh, how many of you guys uh, how the JSON file, JSON. JSON is actually JavaScript object notation, stands for JavaScript object notation, but JSON is also same as dictionary. It's a different name, but there's key over key, key and value paired. But what, the reason I'm emphasizing this dictionary from uh, the data structure is because if you go to uh, the real world in order to visualize something, let's say these days half of data is a CSV file, like structural data, half of them is unstructured, the semi-structural data, I'm sorry. Yeah, JSON file. So, I mean, you need to get used to um, tweak, play with the JSON data. Yeah, I mean, JSON data is pretty, important. I mean, just take a look at the, the, the array. So we simply like indexing, just like using the bracket here, right? Well, sometimes we do like data and then dimension. This is the third dimension, two, zero, zero. We can index, index data in this way, yeah? Because this is a structured data. We can indexing, right? In, in the, the, based on the, the hierarchy of the dimension, right? But now we have a little bit different like the system, but that kind of data has become bigger and bigger. See, actually a lot of, a lot of uh, the, the local government or organization, they release not only CSV file, but also the JSON file or XML file or things like that, okay? So this is nothing special. As I said, Python is one of the easiest languages for ordinary people. So very similar, right? So we have this data and then we parent, make a parenthesis rather, using the rather than number. So we can use the, the key, 
key value, let's say. Name, right? So you're going to print Namju, yeah? And then wait, you're going to print 65, right? So we basically query information by um, key, right? And then the return value is the value of the key. Okay, great. So here, uh, person is an object, dictionary object. It has a height, name, weight. But after that, I wanna, I wanna um, add one more parameter called address. And then we can do this like this. We can basically append. You know what? The list has their own sort of sequences because they're list like in order, right? Because we can index them from zero and minus one, or like we can pop the last one. But dictionary has kind of this concept, but I think it has a more like a, a little bit different, like a linked concept. I mean, which is a little bit different. But as I said, my what I'm trying to say is that we can index by key value, okay? Because Tomorrow, we're going to deal with the JSON file or GeoJSON file. So most of the data has a key and value. So we need to index the particular um, sort of um, uh, section or data set. Yeah. And then we have a, also, this, you're familiar with this operation, right? The plus uh, equal. It's meaning that whatever you, you, the number you have, I just want to increase this, uh, this, uh, this many number to your you know, base number, yeah. So if you print it, it has a, my weight, uh, my height is become grow. <laughs> my name is same, weight is same. I add my address to the, to the dictionary, okay? And then also I added the other skill. I can do Rhino, I can do, you know, Grasshopper, Photoshop, I can add, yeah. So also using the delete, delete special, it has a known like a parenthesis, right? So it's just like a, some uh, designate special function that uh, which, which allow us to remove a particular key pair value inside of the dictionary. So this is the, uh, just a, a good function. Yeah? And then also we have a new keyword enumerate, enumerate things. So to make a long story, you know, if you put the enumerate, uh, if you put the dictionary inside of the enumerate, it gives us two return value. Yeah, the first return value is going to be key value, and the second value is is is, is going to be the the, the actual value. <laughs> because we are not using number to index, right? We use key value to index. So the enumerator is basically uh, decompose the dictionary and then we give us, it give us a key. And then using this key, we can actually index the dictionary to get the right value, okay? So, I mean, I know it's a bit confused. Uh, even for me, if I love, when I, when I, when I uh, I'm trying to retrospect to my class, but it's really, you know, complicated even, um, simple one line of code. So I'm just, uh, in this case, one best way to deal with this difficulty is just, just typing, just typing. Believe me, yeah, I'm pretty, yeah. Um, I saw a lot of example. So, okay. Yeah, here, um, this is the list, yeah. And then this is empty dictionary, right? So using the, uh, the um, array, we create a for loop, yeah. And then the most important thing is that you need to do like a, like a, um, the, the comma. Uh, I forgot. How can I call it? Does anyone help me? Colon, colon, colon. Okay. You need to do colon. Okay. And then actually, uh, this is I forgot. I'm, I'm sorry. You need to do tab space. Tab. Yeah. Because very sensitive Python. Yeah, so you need to do tap. But in this case, uh, I do twice because the formatting is a little bit different, but you need to do like one tap anyhow. So, so um, yeah, so this for loop is executed uh, three times with this number A, B, C, right? 
So each ABC has a, the other three times sub numbers. Correct, right? And then we keep adding the list. If you, if you feel like the computer, we just focus this one. Yeah, we create a new list, append one, two, three. That's it. And then at the end, uh, and after this function, we wanna, ins uh, the, we wanna append, insert this new array to that dictionary, right? So at the end of the execution, we have this kind of the result. A, right, execute, one, two, three, it comes from this loop, correct. And then B, another B loop, one, 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 two, three, one, two, three, right? So we basically chipping two different array as a dictionary. I mean, so this is all about, uh, right now we are looking at this example as a full loop, double full loop, but it's more about like how you think about pre uh, how to process your data as a pre-process. Yeah. So this is all about like, a, it's not about the programming at the end of the day, it's more about like, a, oh, okay, this kind of data set, in order to visualize, we need to make this kind of process. It's more about the thinking process, okay? And I'm not going to talk about the tuple deeply because um, it's a little bit straightforward. It's very similar to the, um, um, the let's say, the array, okay? But it's immutable. Once you assign it, we cannot change. This is the, let's say, uh, the importance of tuple or beauty of a tuple, yeah. So there's a tuple example here. And then function, yeah. So until now, we know for loop, right? We learn how to make an if statement. We know, you know, what is the conditional, how can we you know, compare this kind of information, right? But in terms of the visualization, the visualization consists of multiple parts, as I said, a pre-process, pre-pre-pre-process, or process, post-process, post-post-post-process. It depends on you, how, how you're gonna cook your data before visualization. So what I'm trying to say is that there's a one function that we can use in multiple time in your process or pre-process or visualization time. So we need to modulize the, 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 the function. We need to isolate the function, right? This is really important for the computer science in terms of the developing the architecture, not architecture architecture, the software architecture for visualization. So how we you know, um, isolate the problem and we create a particular you know, feature or functions in an isolated way. And we have like a 10 of different types of function here. And on top of this level, we create the other function, yeah, that cook the low level function. We make some level of the complexity, yeah. And then if you find some problem or some, you, know, you need to make some debug, then you know quickly which one is great, right? So in this context, I think I, I can, uh, talk to deep, but um, just what I want to talk is so we can make a function, yeah? So now we have a def. Def means definition. So you can have def and then space and then make some name, your own special name, and then parenthesis and parenthesis and colon, and then one more tab, and then you can do whatever you want, yeah? Even the function, call the other function, this function call the other function. You can design your own system. But now we can just focus on how we create a, a function here, simply. So here, if I execute it, that one is a execute, and then the sum function is on the memory, actively. And then I just call this function, just like print, just like length or type that we already learned, right? So this is two parameters, right? Maybe you can, make a three or five or 10 parameters, yeah? So, but I need to hit the, 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 the rule so that I give it two numbers. So let's say I can do like this. Minus C, yeah? Then maybe I can do uh, like a one, yeah? Because I forgot the comma. Yeah, this is a really good learning process. 
train error, train error, right? So this is how we create a function, that's it. But some function, I mean, there's a lot of terms like a pure function or, I mean, I don't want to mention, but every function, um, you can make uh, some return value, yeah? So in this case, actually, you know what, they look the same, but, right? But they have a return, but it has no return value. It's meaning that I consume the data, right? And then just execute it, and then that's it. The function is done, yeah? But here, uh, they receive the uh, parameters, and then execute them, and then return, meaning that this one return some value so that we can assign this value to here, yeah? Basically, we create the system, the data flow, yeah? So uh, let's say, I, I can say like every, data, every function, is, is, I think this is a good hobby to, every function has a return value because we can make an explicit, you know, computation thing. So, so I think this is a better approach, even if they are print, yeah, because we have no idea what's going on inside of this, but at least we know, okay, we're gonna, this is input. And this is the output. This is like a machine learning. We pull a box. We have an input. Just give me the output based on your uh, like a logic, and then you can print them. That's it. So this is the, how we use the definition. Also, the definition has uh, more like a complex like if state and for state for loop based on your um, 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 strategy or process. Yeah. So I think that for you. Uh, it's a good hobby is you, whenever you have your actual um, real world pr project or like a you know, toy project or whatever. So I highly recommend you use the definition uh, strategy because we can simply copy paste, copy paste. At the end of the day, if you have like a lot of like algorithm process the data in different circumstances, so you can just tweak them, that's it. That's why, you know, the computer science people uh, make a, a lot of money because they know a, a lot of things. Maybe you know some 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 you know professional people. They have a lot of experience. They know what kind of function does or not, right? So meaning that whenever you create your own function, it's it's yours. It leave you in your your brain actually. Yeah. But for the architectural job or the design job, every project we need to start from scratch. Anyhow, this is just some, my understanding of the beauty of the computation in the house. So uh, this is nothing special. Um, just get random number function, and then um, I, uh, um, you know, how can I say the um, um, core app provides us this kind of uh, the slider bar. So I'm just wanna make some for fun. I just create the. And this one uh, with this, um, um, let's say, I don't know, I'm never use it, but I'm just, just try to use it uh, for our workshop. So just play with it. Um, yeah, other than that, um, as I said, print, length, type, this is sort of inbuilt functions, right? So there's also a lot of functions out there people develop. So in this case, I wanna compute the date time yeah, in this case, we can simply import data and then use these functions using dot fashion, dot now parenthesis open and parenthesis close, right? And then we can get the result. So if you have a question about this library, so simply go to the, uh, the link. And then there's a lot of uh, very kind of documentation on the screen. So this is the beauty of the Python. You know what, if you want to make, a, if you need to make a something, just search it first. I'm for, for sure. Most of them is already there. Just import them and then tweak them. Yeah. And then we have a math here. And then the other, uh, the other special function, DIR, as I said, DIR give us all following functions like uh, sine, cosine, degree, power. Yeah. So for, for example, I have no idea about the um, length. Yeah. You, and then we can do DIR. There's actually no parentheses. This. 
Mm. That's weird. They give us a little longer. Uh, print. Yeah, so this, I mean, the, the underbar to underbar is like a private uh, function that um, the developer don't want to take force to the public, okay? So in this case, we can just simply skip it, but there's a for sure um, some particular, yeah, I mean, I don't know. No, there's no function. There's no like a particular the function below, uh, belongs to the length. The length itself is a, is a the function. So maybe the, uh, after three days, we're gonna learn class, class object. At the times I can tell you what is the, the that operation anyhow. Um, yeah, so um, as I said, you know, think of Python, which is absolutely super great material for those who want to learn Python. And the Code, Code Academy, also when I learned Python in the first place, I used this website actually. Yeah, that one is really fun. And then um, this documentation is uh, about Python itself. Yeah, if you have uh, any uh, like a question or tutorial rivalry, there's a lot of uh, pretty big community, I think, um, for the Python. So, any question? Because I'm, I am teaching really well. Do you guys know no question? <laughs> huh? Hey. Doing a great job, but uh, do we have any assignments to do? At home? Absolutely, yeah. So my assignment is nothing special. Just to fill out all the, um, um, all the like um, uh, the to do stuff like uh, your code here. Maybe I can you can maybe first of all you can just take a uh, just, okay here's stuff. Just just read line by line. Yeah, yeah. And then just you try to memorize, try to memorize, you know, like a replicate without watching the, the code that I did. If you cannot, it's okay. Just, just line by line watching, but, but don't copy paste, please. Just typing T A blah, 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 blah. Just two times, or three times, if, not, if, if you feel like you are not that familiar with. So, but at least the minimum is to fill out everything, please. And then, um, um, oh, by the way, um, I have a exactly the same um, material in the Rhino environment. So for those who are uh, familiar with the Rhino here, uh, Rhino, this is the same thing, exactly ident identical material, yeah, but the Rhino environment, yeah? And also, um, there's a, the other link, like a Python data uh, structure things. Let's say here um, we have we have like very Python basic, right? And data processing. We just saw this material, and then this class of material is identical as this graph. Yeah. And then my my assignment is to revisit this material that we are, you just saw. And then this is the new material, they are also identical. And then please type in. Because there's a, all the, the example is there. And they're just uh, typing in over and over again. And then we can meet and then tomorrow. Or for those who are already familiar with the Python and go to the, uh, all the way down here. Uh, yeah, data processing using Python. This is also the other example. Yeah, like a core app, uh, not additional note. Additional note is just additional note. Uh, yeah, there's a ah, down there a little bit. Yeah, data structure, CSV. This is all the grasshopper things because we want to draw something. Otherwise, you guys got boring and they try to kill me. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, this is the grasshopper definition. There's all the JSON file, but this is the sort of less um, um, like a visualization. Uh, it's not like example file. This is actual visualizing code. So you guys can shop this kind of file, if you're already familiar with the first material that I give you today. That's it. Great. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It was great. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know it's a pretty um, tough uh, in the first place, but you know, just keep doing even if you feel bored or hard. It's gonna be huge return value, just like a function. Okay, we're gonna give a lot of input in the way the function the output from the return value. Great. Um, thank you so much. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Have a nice thank day. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.